All right, this is uh, Tariq and this is the Peloton tread. I purchased this treadmill myself after my old treadmill pretended to break, but later I found out that it didn't actually break. Long story short, immediately after I thought it was on its last breath in the middle of the winter, I decided to go shopping for a new treadmill. The Peloton tread was not on the list of treadmills I was considering, but there was a Peloton store in the area and I decided to check it out and uh, I ended up being surprised by how much I liked it. So I have been running on my Peloton tread for over a month now and I have gotten to know it quite well. I run indoors a lot. I actually do more running indoors than I do outdoors. If you are new to this channel, you might not know that I am a triathlete and I train for full and half Ironman races. So I log a good amount of running day in and day out. With that said, I have put the Peloton tread to the test and in this video I'm going to talk about five things that I really like about this tread and five things I'm not a fan of or I think could be improved. Hopefully this will help you decide if you too want to make this purchase. And if you find this video helpful I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button. It helps the channel and the video quite a bit and I really appreciate it. And just a little quick disclaimer. I do also own the Peloton bike and have a Peloton subscription, but my decision to purchase the treadmill has absolutely nothing to do with the Peloton. Okay, let's start with the purchase and delivery. The whole purchasing process was very easy. If you've ever purchased anything in an Apple store, it's very similar. A nice lady was right there to answer all of our questions and she processed our order and scheduled delivery right on her iPad within minutes. They also offered us a 0% financing right on the spot. So the whole ordering and delivery scheduling process was very quick and just easy. And I like that. On the scheduled delivery date, the delivery truck arrived on time. Two guys carried all the parts to my workout space. They set up the treadmill for me and ran the calibration. They were very professional and the whole setup process took about 40 minutes or so. Okay, let's talk about the design. What I love about the treadmill is its minimalistic, modern, and simple design. But don't let that simplicity fool you. It is a very sturdy and well-built treadmill. The frame is compact and minimal, which I really, really like. It doesn't take much space in the room and provides me with all the space I need to do my runs without the bulkiness that you generally find with other treadmills. Its modern design and beautiful iPad looking screen make it look like a nice furniture piece that you won't mind displaying in your house. The small tray in front has a place for two water bottles and an area to place your phone, AirPod case, fan remote or whatever. The water bottle holders is very good by the way. It will hold your water bottles very tight and it won't be bouncing all over the place as you might experience with other treadmill which drives me nuts. And how about this continuous build design? There is no visible motor like you see with almost every commercial treadmill out there unless you spend over $10,000 for a woodway. This was a big selling point for me because on other treadmills I constantly hit the motor cover. The running deck feels great. I love running on it. It's not too firm or too soft. I would say it just feels right. I also found the belt speed changes pretty quickly, much quicker than my previous treadmill. It seems to take less than two seconds to go up one miles per hour. I timed it from five miles per hour to 10 miles per hour. It took about seven seconds from one miles per hour to 12 miles per hour. It took about 18 seconds. The other thing I love about the treadmill is the speed and incline knobs. They are very easy to operate and intuitive. Rotate the knob forward to increase speed and backward to decrease speed. There is also a jump button uh, which you can press to increase speed by one full mile per hour. You can do the same with the incline knob. This is helpful when you want to quickly increase the speed or quickly increase the incline. However, as much as I like the ease of use of the knobs, they are not as precise as having speed buttons while running. Uh, you will find yourself rotating the knobs back and forth to try to get it exactly where you want it. It would have been nice to have some kind of feedback as you rotate the knobs for each point. My fiance mentioned the same thing about the knobs. So we know if she did, we know it's an issue. But even with that, I still prefer the knob design over the traditional buttons that you find on other treadmills. Moving on to the software. 
Although many people have mistakenly believed you need to have a Peloton subscription to use a treadmill, you actually don't. And yes, the subscription is great and will give you full access to all their content, which can be nice to have on days where you are just not in the mood to run or need a little variety, but you can still use the Peloton treadmill even without a subscription. You will have access to the Just Run feature, which is all you need to run. When using the Just Run, you will have all the stats such as pace, distance, total elevation, total runtime, and even power output just like any other treadmill out there. Personally, I use the Just Run for the majority of my runs. One thing I don't like about the Peloton software is that they lock down their platform so much, they don't broadcast all their running information over Bluetooth or ANT Plus to allow you to record your runs on other devices like your fitness watch, for example, or broadcast to a third party app like uh, Zwift. This explains why I have this device, which basically measures the belt speed and broadcasts that data over Bluetooth. It pairs to Zwift and all my runs are recorded on Zwift as well. Although runs are saved within the Peloton and can be shared to Strava, that's about it as far as sharing and communicating with third party apps. If you use other apps to log your workouts, share with a coach and track progress like training peaks for example there is no direct way to upload your runs over to training peaks for example you can use zwift to ride race and work out and zwift allows you to share your workout data to many different third-party apps i am mentioning this here because these are the little things peloton could do to expand their footprint beyond people interested in their classes and being limited to the peloton ecosystem Peloton doesn't even allow you to download your workout files without using some third-party hack or share it to Strava and then having to go to Strava and download your workout file from there. But back to the subscription, this is one thing that I also enjoy about the treadmill. You will find a large variety of classes that you can pick from, walks, easy runs, speed work, hill repeats, progression runs, etc. You can browse through their recommended classes, sessions, live and on-demand classes. If you are looking for something specific, you can use their filter to find specific classes. For example, if you have a 45 minute run on the schedule, you can use the filter to only display all classes that are 45 minute long. You can also filter by the instructor or multiple instructors. Also other filter options are available such as music type, sessions only, etc. They also have scenic runs and these are divided by time, distance and guided runs where you have a Peloton instructor running with you. You will eventually find yourself liking the style or workouts of some instructors. Personally, I have taken classes with Bex and Matt and found their workouts to be good and engaging for my style of training. Bex comes from a long distance running background and Matt is also a cyclist and triathlete so their workout seems to fit what I do. They also have challenges and programs you can sign up for to help uh, you train for something specific. So there is a lot you can choose from to keep you motivated and entertained. There is one thing that I do not like about the classes though. They do not have any kind of description of the specific run workout. I like to know if the run I am choosing is going to be five by one minute repeats or if it's going to be three by two minute with hills repeats in between. I have done a handful of classes but I find I mostly use the just run feature on my own and that's for multiple reasons. The main reason is there is no structure or plan. Every class is just a class with some intervals. If I am signed up for a race or I just want to plan out my year, I like to have some kind of a plan or um, progression. So for example, this week I'll do seven by one minute intervals and the next week I might do eight by one minute intervals. If those specific classes exist, they are not easy to find. Their class titles are very vague and are called things like EDM run, RMB run, endurance run, tempo run. And like I said, if you tap on a class, the description doesn't really give you many details about the workout. You'll see very brief details like warm up time, run time, and cool down. But what does that run time mean? It doesn't really say. If you scroll down further, you'll see a pace chart, which gives you some kind of an idea 
of how the workout is structured, but it's still very vague. You cannot tap on the chart and see the length of the interval and how hard they are. Basic information about the workout doesn't seem to exist. You can click on the preview video to get some information, but that's just not practical if you are browsing for a specific type of workout and can take a long time. There is also no clear workout guide when you are taking a class. You'll see a general pace or incline recommendation but the ranges are very wide. You might see something like six miles per hour to nine miles per hour. You will have to listen and pay attention to the instructor as they are calling out each interval. If you get distracted, you have no idea how long the interval is, which is sort of important when running to know to decide what pace you are going to run it in. Running at six miles per hour? is totally different than running at nine miles per hour. Speaking of menus and software, in a class, the menu gives you the option to amplify music or amplify the instructor's voice. There is no option to just listen to music, listen to the instructor without the music, or listen to the instructor and your own music. Many times I found myself wanting to do a class, but I wasn't a fan of the music, so it would be nice to just let me pick my own music. On the bright side, the software does offer a lot of potential for future updates and the possibility of seeing these enhancements added in the future. Peloton is constantly updating their software and adding new features. For example, they just recently updated the Peloton treadmill and bike with a new feature that allows you to use the Apple Watch as a heart rate monitor. And last year, they added sessions and the ability to stack classes so you can do multiple classes sequentially. So Peloton is constantly pushing these updates seamlessly behind the scene. And just recently, they responded to their users' requests to add a pause button to workouts. There are also a few customizable options. For example, you can easily customize the speed and incline shortcuts to any speed or incline you would like. You can also easily hide all the menus on the screen while running by double tapping on the screen. You can bring back any other menu you want to keep displayed. For example, if you want to keep everything hidden except the bottom stat menu, you can just tap on the stats icon on the bottom and bring that back up. All right, the bottom line for me, the Peloton has more pros than cons. As a treadmill, it ticked all the boxes for me. It's well built. I like the modern design, the running surface, the screen, the layout of the speed and incline knobs, tray, and a very good water bottle holder. All treadmills I looked at in the $2,500 price range, they just did not do it for me. I could clearly see the compromises the manufacturer made in the design. If you are someone who is looking to get into running or just a healthier lifestyle, I think the Peloton treadmill paired with the Peloton subscription offer so much and you are more likely to use it and not end up being as a clothing rack. For the hardcore runners out there, it might not have some of the bells and whistles other treadmills might have. Like, I don't know, what other features do you really use when running on other treadmills outside of the speed and incline? Whether you decide to get the Peloton subscription or not, there are limitations in the software that I wish Peloton addresses, but these are all in the software. And as we know, the software can be easily updated and Peloton might or might not address them. They were not really important to me when I purchased the treadmill and I can live without them. Personally, I just wanted a treadmill that is well-built, looked good, and hopefully last me many years. I guess what I'm trying to say here is, don't let that subscription intimidate you. You do not have to get it and it will work just like any other treadmill out there. And as a treadmill, I think it's a really solid treadmill. If you have the Peloton treadmill, let me know your experience down in the comment and uh, would you recommend it? Do you use a subscription or you don't? Let's chat. Okay, hope you find this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you are still watching and have not subscribed yet, then you know what to do. Thank you for watching and see you guys in the next video.